Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Simon Watkins is here as a worldwide product marketing manager for HP Storage. He's joined by Tim Height, Barrett Jackson, who's an IT practitioner. Gentlemen, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Simon, Thank we're you. talking about one of my favorite subjects in the world is London. Yeah. The great city of London, or where you live. And, uh, Born and bred. Yeah, Born awesome. and bred. So, uh, soccer fan, I presume? Uh, well, we call it football, yeah. but yeah, it's soccer, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and of course, HP Bristol, renowned you know, development center for, for tape. Yeah. Here, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hold that up, actually. Yeah, there you go. Well, how much, how much capacity? 6.25 terabytes on a single cartridge. 6.25. LTO6. That's compressed, but a lot of data. So, let me ask you a question about that. Um, 6.25 terabytes. How long does it take to scan a 6.25 terabyte cartridge? So, um, the, the transfer rate for an LTO6 drive uh, is about 1.4 terabytes an hour. So, we can work it out. That's the transfer rate of an LTO6 drive. Okay, so you can do the math on that. And then, as that capacity doubles, which, which it will do, you know, the time it takes to scan that tape won't change, will it? No, no. Right. It's, it's kind of, yeah, performance will be so. Well, let me ask you a question. What's the maximum capacity of a disk drive today? Was it eight terabytes, six terabytes? Yeah, around that. How long does it take to rebuild an eight terabyte disk drive? Quite a while. Oh, well. How long is it going to take to rebuild a 30 terabyte disk drive? Quite a while. A month, two months, three months? No. The point we're getting to here, folks, is tape is alive and well. Everybody says tape is dead. It's yeah, not dead. Absolutely. Um, for reasons that I, I've implied in my little soliloquy there. But, um, but so anyway, we'll talk about some of that. So Tim, yes. uh, tell us about Barrett Jackson. It was a little side you know, yeah, card yeah. there, but uh, Barrett Jackson, we were a car auction, and he started in 1971 in Arizona, and we have grown over the past, you know, 40, coming up on our 45th anniversary in Jan January, and we have grown to become a much larger than just a car auction. We're an event, we're a lifestyle, a media sensation. Yeah, I media, mean, we're live television yeah. coverage which really is one of the main reasons why I had to look at the tape solution was for the uh, television side of things. You know, I have 18 years of historical footage, all, you know, HD, where do I put that? You know, having it sitting on uh, online storage or spinning disc, it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. Um, so we looked at the, the tape solution. So, so give, add some more color to that. So, yeah, yeah. specifically, what are you doing with, with that? What are you storing on that on right. that on that so tape? So, we we have our broadcast that we broadcast. We've been broadcasting for the last you know eighteen years, like I was saying, on Fox. Now we're on the Discovery and Velocity Channel, mm -hmm. and that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that we have of footage going back historically, we digitized it. it used to be on tapes. We had it on many, 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 many formats. You know, beta beta cam, and three quarter, and DVC Pro, all that. So we went through and, and digitized all that. And then it was a matter of where do we, where can we centrally put all of this information that we can access it as we need it. Um, and we needed a large storage array of some sort. We looked at spinning discs, we looked at building a home system, a home brew system, just a bunch of discs, things like that. And then it came down to reliability. We wanted it to last. I mean, this is 18 years of footage and we went through all this trouble to digitize it. Where do we put it that we know it's going to be safe? And it, looking even further is having more than one copy. Um, and the reason I say looking forward is because now that I've digitized the 18 years, now it's time to go back and meta tag it and start going and slicing, dicing it up and, and making clips and making it searchable. So that, let's say we want to do a special on um, 65 Mustangs or 69 Camaros or pre-war classics, whatever it is, that we can, we can make edit decisions very quickly um, by knowing that we have that footage. Uh, if we search it and realize we don't have it, well, let's, let's do a different segment. Um, so just being able to retrieve it if we need it and when we need it was really the big thing we're looking at. So this is your digital transformation, right? Essentially it's a metadata problem, metadata management challenge. Um, okay, and then I can see a lot of ways in which you could use that footage. 
did you make that available to your community? Uh, and, and, that, and that's really, I think, the next phase. We need to, we need to lay the foundation first. Um, you know, it's, it's been that process because we have an auction every four, you know, four times a year. So, you know, what we do when we do an auction is we pack everything up, we move our data center to the event, set it all up. So when we have these opportunities for these projects, you know, it's, it's hit it hard, take a break, hit it hard, take a break. Um, so now we're in that process of, okay, we finally digitized everything. Now the next phase is cataloging it. So Simon, we've seen the repositioning of tape as a, the primary backup medium to now one of long-term retention. Absolutely. And it's a superior long-term retention. We've said, we've written about this on Wikibon for years. It's the superb long-term retention because as you were pointing out, Tim, it lasts longer right. than, than spinning media. It's, it's far, far less expensive. The issue has always been you know, performance, the perceived performance, but we yeah. can even put forth a case, and we'll talk about that, yeah. where tape is actually higher performance. But so give us the update, if you would, Simon, on, on tape from HP's perspective, the technology, the market, the strategy. Yeah, so so tape is obviously, it's it's a very mature technology, right? It's been around more than 60 years now, but, but we think that just because the technology is mature, doesn't mean there aren't any opportunities, and it certainly doesn't mean that there isn't any any innovation. Right, so in terms of the opportunity, um, the market was worth over $2 billion last year worldwide for tape. And also, secondly, you know, more data is being stored on tape than ever before. So, you know, we're seeing more capacity shipped on tape. More, the, the, it's, it's a double digit growth we're seeing in terms of capacity shipping on tape. And I think the reason for that, the reason why adoption for tape is remaining very strong is as, as you said, tape's kind of blend of, of low cost, high capacity, removable, reliable storage is allowing it to, to evolve from its traditional role as a backup medium to, as you said, more of a kind of long-term retention archive use case. Now, when it comes to kind of what we call cold archive, you know, tapes low cost, uh, less than one cent a gigabyte, um, you know, the energy benefits of tape, it's a green technology, you store it off site, it doesn't consume any energy. The reliability benefits of tape are very important. The drawbacks of tape when it comes to archive was it was traditionally not a good solution for active archives because getting to data on tape, you'd need to use an ISV application to write that data. Um, and it was often written proprietary formats. So you know, 10 years down the track, if you want to get that tape data back, you'd need the ISV application. That all changed with the introduction of LTFS, right? right? And that's an open format specification for the story of content on tape. It makes tape self-describing, just like a USB disk. So that accessibility problem goes away. And also, because you're storing content in an open format, you're not tied into any ISP application. So LTFS is a real game changer for active archives. And one of the, 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 the really kind of powerful implementations of LTFS is what we call tape as NAS. Yeah. And what that does, is essentially is virtualizes a tape library behind a disk cache. It could be flash, it could be spinning disk. Um, and what that means is that applications can now access tape directly via that cache. And if you use flash as opposed to spinning disk, you get the performance benefits of, of, uh, of flash with the long-term cost and reliability benefits of tape. So that's kind of the value proposition, and that's exactly what Barry Jackson are using. Yeah, and so there's been a, a big marketing push in, in the industry from a number of, of vendors that tape is dead, tape SUS, CKS, blah, blah, blah. But, but the reality is for most practitioners out there is it's got a role. Yeah. Whether it's the, the, the backup of last resort, you know, that you're yeah. going to stuff in an iron mountain somewhere, or in specific use cases like, like Tim is seeing. So I want to explore this a little bit. I, I, I went pretty fast at the beginning, but people watching are probably thinking, well, how, can, how can Dave say that tape could actually be higher performance? So, Let's talk about that a little bit. So there are only, I don't know how many disk drive vendors are left, it's a handful, two, three, four, I mean, yeah. but nobody's investing in, I mean high performance disk is an oxymoron. You can't spin it any faster and, and you can't put more track, more data on the, on the track uh, and because the heads aren't evolving. Yeah. They're hermetically sealed, nobody's investing in heads anymore. And so as a result, getting data out of a disk is like sucking data out of a thin straw. We don't have that problem with tape, no. right? Because LTFS gives you advantages, but yeah. the, the tape, or the heads in theory, I guess you could stagger them and. That's right. Right, and, I, and, I, and so that's why I said earlier, the time it takes to scan or whatever it is, a six terabyte cartridge today, is going to be the same today as it is 10 years from now, yeah. you know, five years from now, whatever, when that capacity doubles or triples. The, the effective capacity, the bandwidth rate of a disk drive is going to go into hell in a handbasket. Yeah. So now it starts to open up all these new opportunities to 
to use tape in new different ways. So I want to explore this with you, Tim. So you've got all this archive footage, right. and you're you're starting to meta tag it now, right? Correct. Where are you at in that process? So where we're at in this process is it's really kind of a it's it's almost like a three-step approach. The first was digitized. We've got it digitized. Um, we now are ingesting it into a media asset management system. What that simply does is just kind of start creating the database, file names, size, things like that. The next phase is going to be Excuse me, that's a piece of ISV software, that, right? yeah, is that yeah. right? Or is that something you guys wrote? Or No, no, it's a, if you don't mind me sharing, it's it's a co company called uh, Squarebox and CatDB is the name Squarebox of the Squarebox Cat, I want, I want to know, because we have the same yeah, problem here. Right. The Cube has yeah, a, right. a lot of video. <laughs> yeah, and I do our, our live stream too, and so I'm going to be using the system for that as well. Cool. Um, and so what we're doing now that we've ingested it, and you know, I'm, I'm doing it in kind of in phases. I don't want to jump in and, and, and do throw 90 terabytes at it, because that's basically what I have to ingest right now. I'm kind of doing it slowly and learning and really trying to try, trying to know everything about it. So now I'm in the process of creating a proxy version. So I've got 1080i footage. Some of those files are 400, 500 gig. Well, with CatDV, what it allows me to do is it allows me to make a browser-based searching functionality. So if I have an editor in New York that needs a footage for, let's say, a charity vehicle that sold the last auction, I can have them log in, search the, the file, and then send me uh, edit choices, which then sends me an XML file. I then put that into our edit system, and it will then retrieve the high-res version, whether it's sitting on tape, whether it's sitting on the disk cache that like we were talking about earlier. And that's an automated process? It is an automated process in the sense of once you have the meta tag tagging done, and you export a very simple XML file. I bring that into Final Cut. CatDV talks with Final Cut and knows that, well, here's here's where the footage is. The uh, QStar manages where which tape it's on. Um, you know, to to QStar, it sees everything that I throw at it. So whether it's on tape only or whether it's also already in the cache. So QStar indexes everything, correct, and then goes and gets it right. when you so, need it. Right. So yeah. let's say I, I have something that I that's that's my cache is 10 terabytes, by the way. So let's say I have something that was 50 terabytes ago, and I go to search it, it pulls it up, it, it, it shows that the file exists. It's going to take you know 15, 16 minutes to pull that off the tape and load it into the cache. But what that allows us to do is is still make edit choices. At the end of the night, you run all your XML. By the time you come in, it's sitting on disk cache. So hopefully by the time overnight, it was able to go and pull all those files that you need on the high resolution side. So the, the metadata uh, about what files live where mm -hmm. sits, historically it would sit on the tape, cartridge itself, correct? As far as but the file management yeah. portion is concerned, yeah. okay. yeah. for the tape library. And, it's, and it still sits there in, in your case. Right. So and then. We also have another layer of metadata, which is the video content itself. So, so, so could you elevate that file level metadata to a cache, a flash, let's yeah. say? Yeah. And, and that's yeah, and that's technology that's, that's in that, development, that's presumably, the right? Use that case, right? Flake, that you guys right? have written about, right? David Floyer, my colleague, who's also from England, coined that term. Yeah. But the concept being, elevate that metadata, file metadata, to a, a, ca on, a flash, flash yeah. layer, yeah. and then write algorithms that because it's all of time to first byte is going to be faster on disk, but time, time to, to last byte, byte is, yeah. is going to be faster yeah, on, on, on tape. If, in yeah. fact, you can write algorithms to say, okay, I need this data, and I'm going to pass the fifth seek request, I'll grab that on the way, reorder at the back end. Yeah. They're not like rocket science algorithms. I mean, you know, smart people can write them. Yeah. Uh, and that blows away the performance of disk for large object file re retrieval. Like video. Yeah. Like, like video. video. Yeah. You know, yeah. or even, or even shorter files that you're storing for long-term retention that you can you can concatenate. Yeah. So yeah. we think the tape has this wonderful future because it's way 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 less expensive. Yeah. And it's, believe me, in this scenario, it's higher performance. Yeah. So it's a real winner. So that's that two right. billion we think is going to be flat to up even potentially. Yeah. And because also the there's a lot of uh, runway for the aerial density for tape. So we think that cost per gigabyte is going to go down, right? As, oh yeah. As so so the cost advantage of tape I think will only get better. Yes, and so so so, so yeah. disk in this scenario kind of gets squeezed. The spinning disk; it's not the high performance. Yeah, it may not be the best bit bucket, long term, as technology vendors 
you know, work on these. So is HP actually actively working on that type yeah, of technology? Yeah, we are into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. it's good because yeah. there's only a few tape vendors out who have the capability to do it. You're one of them, and we're one of them. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah. In fact, we're the market leader actually in uh, the kind of the the, the mid-range uh, space. Right. So. Yeah, we're still investing a lot in tape. We've got LCS 7 coming out soon, so we've got a good roadmap moving forward. So yeah, it's it's a it's a good business for us. So I mean, what, what's your reaction to this conversation, Tim? I mean, would you like? I mean, I presumably you'd like to see the industry sort of move in this direction. I do. You know, in 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 the sense of you know, so I've talked about this 90 terabytes that we've digitized. You know, that, that that's that's a that's a scratch of the surface of what I have. You know, I, I'm only, I've only I was going to say, 90 terabytes this must be nothing. Oh, your, no, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because all I've done was digitize the broadcast. You know, we still have every single camera. I mean, I see here you have a four camera setup. Yeah, right. You know, if I so cho chosen, I could then do premium archive footage that's never been shown on television. You know, so the, the possibilities are endless. And, if it, it, you know, with the tape system that we went with, it's modular. So I can keep growing this thing you know, I don't know, you tell me indefinitely. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is by the time I outgrow what, what, what I have and my need is, you know, he's already mentioned. So how do you so, yeah. automate, you know, can you, so you automate the categorization of all this, this, this data, right? Is that, and that's what QSTAR or CatDB does? Or? It's more of the CatDB yeah. side. So um, I was explaining to Simon earlier about that was, I know everything about the vehicle that was selling. Um, you know, from the year, the make, the model, the engine size, the VIN, I know all that information. That's on our, our, our internal system that runs the, the auction company. Um, we are looking at a couple different options there, uh, both moving forward for future recordings and historical recordings. Um, right now, XML, it seems to be the most viable option for historical, um, but then we're also looking at uh, return on investment. So in other words, let's see what the need is and how much we actually really need to go and Meditech every single vehicle. Do we need to um, make this publicly accessible? If so, then absolutely we do. Um, but again, going back to where we're there more than just a car auction, we're an entertainment brand. So we have some segments where uh, the, the talent on air talent will be talking about a vehicle and speaking with the owner and the historical family you know, significance of it. You know, is that interesting to, to put out there in the world and make it searchable? or is it all about the cars? Well, it's just a really an interesting use case. I mean, this is a ex great example. If you've got content, that content is an asset. Can you monetize that? Maybe, maybe not. Can right. you can you create value for your community? Can and you I, yeah. launch new businesses? I mean, I'm sure these are the discussions you're having Absolutely. internally, like right. every company should be having. And so, but that's a, you know, you kind of, f we fall into it as technology evolves. You've got this corpus of data. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? And mm -hmm. it's not an easy, thing to attack, but the technology's there to do it, and, and if the ideas are floating, which I'm sure they are, yes. HP's enabling those ideas, we heard, in the idea economy, so uh, that's fantastic. Well, we're out of time, we've got to leave it there, but uh, okay. uh, I'll, I'll give you the last word, Tim. Um, sort of advice for practitioners, peers, trying to sort of struggle with uh, this challenge. What would you do differently if you had to do it over again? Or yeah, no, specific, sp specifically to my case, um, really I guess the only thing that I would do differently, which I luckily have uh, enabled myself to, to, to go about it differently, is a larger cache. Um, you know, because I'm dealing with such very large files, um, more cache is definitely better. You know, if you're using it for more of a uh, user level, you know, documents, smaller files, you know, you don't really need as much of a big mm -hmm. cache, but when you're dealing with 500 gig files, one after another, uh, you chew that, that cache up very quickly. Um, you know, and, and that, that, that's really, I, I think just do your research, and I think if you really look at the cost per gig and growth, you will start really seriously because I was I was anti. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. A lot, was, lot of naysayers. Like, this right. isn't going to work. Yeah. And eventually, performance. Mark my words. Yeah. Cash is king. Where well, you heard it here, yeah. <laughs> you know, for the millionth time. But uh, Tim and Simon, thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Great Thank you. segment. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is the Cube. We're live from HP Discover. Be right back.